Hey everyone and welcome to my webinar on how to dominate your competition. Um, in this afternoon's presentation, we're going to talk about how to use inbound marketing to, to leverage your company against the competitors and kind of non-traditional ways to market your business, especially if you're resale web hosting, and how you can kind of make a splash in the industry without having to dump millions of dollars into paid advertisements. There's this myth that goes along the industry that you have to be a millionaire to have a successful company, and that's just not true. That's the cool thing about the Internet, especially nowadays with social media. You don't have to have millions of dollars in ad budgets to be successful. You just have to be willing to do some things that um, are different and kind of against the grain. And basically, if you have the ethic, work ethic to really work hard and to uh, produce content, you can really leverage that to make up for um, not spending millions of dollars in ads. So let's talk about about this and let's jump right into it. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Ryan Gray. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Name Hero Cloud Web Hosting. We're leaders in reseller um, web hosting. So if you don't have a reseller account and you're interested in, in reselling web hosting and making money off web hosting, give us a, a shout at namehero.com. Um, also, we have traditional web hosting. We host a lot of WordPress websites. So if you're looking for a fast WordPress site, make sure you give us a, um, um, a shout as well. And we also have um, high-speed VPS managed cloud servers. So if, you're, um, if your business is too large for a um, shared or reseller solution, then we, of course, have a solution to accommodate you. Okay, so I got started working on the internet in 1998, so since then, I'm almost uh, 20 years now, hard to believe. I've been working online. I'm a husband, identical twin, and a father. I, um, I frequently blog. If you follow me um, at Name Hero, you can go to namehero.com slash startup or namehero.com slash blog. Either one will go to the same place, and that's where I blog. I'm a techie. I always have been, uh, and I'm also an uh, investor. I like to invest into the stock market and to companies that I see um, can do well. Uh, since, the late, since the late 90s, I've founded seven different online companies. And since 2007, I adapted this inbound content marketing strategy because I was tired of paying so much for ads. And um, I've generated um, several million dollars uh, from inbound content marketing alone, uh, not including the paid advertisements. So um, I started tracking that um, back in 2007, so for about 10 years, because I was curious uh, if I could, if it was even possible to do, just because a lot of my colleagues, a lot of my friends, they all told me, you know, Ryan, you've got to be spending on AdWords, or you've got to be spending on uh, media buys, or you've got to be on um, radio or, or um, even television for certain companies. Um, and I just didn't want to believe that. And so I just started doing this inbound content marketing and, and was, I've been really amazed by the results. And, and that's the, the purpose of this webinar is to teach you some of these as well and kind of teach you how you can develop this strategy. And specifically, we're going to talk about reselling web hosting and kind of how you can start your business with this type of marketing. I've self-funded all my ventures. I've never had any investor capital or taken a, taken a loan out. I've never done any of that. Um, so all, the, all of my ventures have been bootstrapped. So um, I know what it's like to sit in your shoes, to be an entrepreneur, to want to um, you know have my own business and to do well, um, but not have all this investor capital and, and all this um, um, all these assets available to me. So I, I know um, what you're going through. So I can can relate to a lot of you out there. Okay, I'm just going to put it out there. Most of the, your competitors, are they're doing it all wrong. Even if they're bigger than you, even if they're a bigger company than you, they might have got in earlier. Um, they might have worked their way up to where they do have capital. Um, but even so, they're still, most of your competitions are, are doing it wrong. They're not, um, they don't see it the right way. So once you realize that, that the majority of the people out there, the big companies out there are doing it wrong, well, I think it gives you a little bit more confidence that, hey, okay, well, I can do it the right way. And there are some, now I'm not saying everyone does it wrong because there's some companies out there, especially in the web hosting niche, that do it right. Um, they have really good inbound marketing strategies, but the majority of them just don't. Uh, some of them will start, but then they'll stop because they don't have the manpower or the knowledge just to keep going with it. Um, so once you realize that, and, and, and me even at Name Hero, and if you've followed Name Hero for any amount of time, you've seen our growth. We came on to the hosting scene in 2015, which a lot of web hosts don't come on, they don't get started there. And then we've catapulted our growth um, over the last two years to be um, quite large, and that's through the inbound content marketing. Um, and so once that you, you see that um, your competition's not doing it right, or the majority of your competition not doing it right, it gives you entry points, and it gives you a nice barriers of entry where you can jump in and do things the the, um, right way and get a lot of customers. 
Okay, so let's begin this by talking about what is inbound marketing or content marketing. So I like to start things out with a Wikipedia definition because you can always go to Wikipedia and and, um, and read up on it a little bit more. Um, but simply put, inbound marketing is promoting a company through blogs, podcasts, videos, ebooks, newsletters, white papers, SEO, physical products even, social media marketing, and other forms of content marketing which serves to attract customers through different stages of the purchase funnel. And throughout this presentation, I'm going to talk about that purchase funnel and how you can make your own. But basically, it's using all these means of content to market your business rather than going to AdWords and paying um, $15 cost per click. So if you're in the web hosting niche, you know if you go sign up with Google AdWords and you set up a campaign, you know you're going to be paying upwards of $15, $20 a click. And that's just a click. That's not guaranteed a purchase. So someone's just going to click on your um, ad and they're going to hit your site. And, and of course, the majority of people that click are not going to buy. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, 20% of them would be good, right? But still paying $20 a click, it gets super expensive. So inbound marketing is a way to avoid all that cost and to use content that you produce to actually turn readers, uh, turn potential customers into paying customers. And I'm going to tell you exactly how. Um, Moving forward here a little bit more, inbound inbound marketing leverages um, useful content and it creates a trust between um, the potential customers. So you can also call this content marketing. Um, It's also been known as bum marketing. Uh, And several years ago, that was um, what it was referred as because it wasn't this big um, um, corporate marketing plan and kind of against the grain. Uh, More traditional marketing, such as pay-per-click, media buying, social media, paid social media, television, radio, that's outbound marketing. So that's that's the difference. That's the opposite to inbound. Probably uh, more traditional marketing is outbound marketing. I'll show you a graphic of that shortly. Now, inbound marketing is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're not going to go to bed tonight, um, wake up tomorrow, implement everything I'm telling you, and then in a week from now, be a millionaire. It doesn't work that way. Now, with paid ads, you know, if you have a tremendous budget, you know, if you have GoDaddy's budget and you have millions of dollars at your disposal, I mean, pretty sure you can set Media Buys live tonight. And within a week, you're probably going to have 10,000 new customers because you just spent $10 million or something crazy. So inbound marketing, this is why it's not um, as publicized as much because it takes time. It's a marathon. It builds upon itself. It's it's a marketing strategy that you have to look at over a five to 10 year period. You're not going to do inbound marketing and it's not going to begin working in a week. Okay. So if you look at it on a five to 10 year stretch, and if you're impatient like me, you can look at it on a yearly stretch and look at it every quarter, but you're, it's just not going to be overnight. So I want to emphasize that. This is why a lot of companies neglect it though. And that's fine. They can neglect it all day long because I'm going to do it. And I hope that you are too, after learning these strategies. So let's take a look at uh, most brands outbound strategy. And um, in our first column here, we have traffic. This is people that are interested, um, or this is just people browsing the internet, okay? This is just basic traffic. Next, you have these placements where you would place outbound bound ads. So search engine marketing, pay-per-click is the first one. So, of course, we talked about going to Google and bidding on web hosting. Again, you're going to pay $20 a click. Um, it's going to be really expensive, and you're not guaranteed a conversion even though people are clicking. So that's the first. The next is display banner ads. So you go to um, CNN.com, weather.com. You're going to see a lot of banner ads on, on those sites. Um, so that's buying those and people clicking on those and going to buy your web hosting. And then finally, social media ads. You can go to Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. They all have paid ads now. Uh, Facebook, of course, this is why it's so big because of its paid ad channel. Um, so, you, of course, you can buy ads on Facebook as well. Um, so, all these channels you can buy ads on. And so, people just browse the internet, see your ads across the internet, um, within hopes of them clicking on your ad, going to your website, and then becoming successful customers. Now, the, the con to this is there's a large acquisition cost, especially in web hosting, because it's, um, it's a very competitive big niche, right? There's endless amounts of companies that offer web hosting. I mean, you can just start searching and I get tired sometimes of finding all the competitors. I mean, it's really, it's tiring, tiring just because so many people can literally with a reseller account and a copy of WHMCS, anyone can be a web host. So you have a lot of competitors out there. 
Um, so because of that, this acquisition cost gets large because there's a lot of people bidding for all this inventory. There's companies that want search engine placements. There's companies that want the banner placements. There's companies that want the, the social media placements. So that's the con to outbound marketing. Now for companies like GoDaddy that are public and have an unlimited amount of cash at their disposal, pretty much, you know, this is easy for them. They can go get a race car. They can, ha- they can have, uh, Danica, um, Patrick drive their race car. Of course she doesn't anymore, but in the beginning, you know, they can spend the millions of dollars for Super Bowl commercials. Now, the average Joe, the average entrepreneur just starting their their web hosting business, they can't afford that, okay? And even if you have a company that has capital, a lot of times you're not going to afford a Super Bowl commercial until you get big. So um, let's look at inbound marketing. So it's a little bit different here. Um, First, you have the traffic that goes um, just like it would just browsing the internet. You have these same placements here, um, but we're going to look at this a little differently. Instead of search engine marketing, you're going to be reaching people through your blog posts, through search engine optimization. So just by posting on your blog, you're going to start ranking. And of course, we can talk about how to SEO your blog and get backlinks and all that. But the traffic is going to be looking for the material you're publishing. So we'll talk about that type of material here in a second. Um, next, there's blogs, websites, and forums that you can publish on. You can guest post on other blogs. There's other websites that will allow you to um, syndicate content. Uh, forums, web hosting talk discussion forums, huge in the web hosting industry, where you can post, you can have your link and your signature, and people will click through there. People will share your content on other blogs, other websites, other forums. Organic social media, this is another huge one. Um, it works very well for us at Name Hero. When I type up a big, nice blog post or have a nice podcast and people share it on their Facebook or on their Twitter or Instagram, I mean, that goes viral. So that comes on. And of course, we have word of mouth. The more useful the content you're posting, um, people talk about it. So for example, this webinar I'm doing right now on inbound marketing, um, so you might really like it and tell your buddy or your co- your colleague or your partner or your wife or your husband or your spouse and, and say, hey, you know, this was an awesome webinar on inbound marketing. You should check it out. So that's going to spread like wildfire. So what we see is we have the same traffic that we, we would that would be bu- clicking on our paid ads, but instead they're going through our unique content to be engaged to get to our funnel. And we'll talk about that funnel. But once they go down the funnel, because your content, right, is not, might not be selling web hosting. If I type the post, why you should buy my web hosting over GoDaddy, I mean, people probably aren't going to buy on that. Maybe they will. I mean, they like reviews. But if instead, if I hooked them in a different way, if I, if I told them a different, if I used, gave them something useful, instead of saying how Name Hero is better than GoDaddy, if I say 22 ways um, to optimize your website speed and engage you, you're going to want to read that post because I'm going to give you information on how to optimize your website. I may want to sell you on it, but then I take you down a funnel that's later going to get your business. So it's that traffic that's interested, goes down your funnel, hits your website, and then they become not only a buyer, but a repeat buyer. So not only just buying once. When the inbound marketing strategies that I develop and then I'm going to teach you how to develop it creates um, recurring customers, people that love you, the people that really want to work with you. And so they, they're not going to just buy web hosting from you. They're going to buy their domains from you. They're going to have their um, brothers and sisters and family members buy their hosting from you. Um, they're going to buy your add-ons. They're going to buy your VPSs. They're going to buy other products. So they're going to be repeat buyers. And it's going to be a low acquisition cost because you're not going to pay for this traffic. You're going to produce content that the people interested in buying want to read Send them down your funnel, send them to your site, and get them to sign up. And you're going to create this layer of trust. Okay, so let's talk about the benefits um, before we get too deep into this. First, it's cost effective. I can type a blog post right now, and it's not going to cost me anything. I mean, I already have a website, I already have WordPress on it, so uh, blog's free. I can do a YouTube video right now, and it's free. You know, I have to have the software, obviously, but there's pretty much any computer. I mean, gosh, the iPhone nowadays, you can cr- record a video and put it on YouTube, and it's free, and it's um, cost-effective, right? Uh, create brand loyalty. You're going to create um, brand loyal customers throughout content marketing because you're going to form their trust, right? You're not, they're not, people don't like to see ads. When people see ads, they, you know, a lot of people ignore them on sites. I mean, if you get, I think if you buy an ad on CNN.com, what's the chances that 50% of the people that go to CNN.com are going to click it? right? Maybe 5% if you're lucky. Probably not even that. Probably a 2 to 1% that see the ad are going to click it. They don't like it. Whereas inbound content marketing, it creates this brand loyal because people love your content. We hope they love it. That's the purpose of creating useful content. And so that's why they're going to be repeat buyers. Now, viral promotion, um, just like I said, 
if this webinar is going to be a great example, because if you like it and you feel like you learned, then you're going to, it's going to go viral. You're going to tell your friends and they're going to tell their friends. Um, and then of course it's going to get you more business. Okay. So let's talk about how to get started with this inbound marketing. And this is for all our resellers out there. And, and this doesn't even have to be a, you don't even have to be a reseller web host. You can have some other business selling something else and use inbound content marketing. Um, but for the purpose of this presentation, I'm talking to those of you that are just getting started reselling, or maybe you're already been reselling. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about how to, how to do in, inbound content marketing a little bit better. So the first thing, and I'll go through each one of these individually, but let's just talk about this list, is identifying your audience. You have to know who you're reaching. You have to publish useful content. That's the key in this, because again, it's called also can be called content marketing, and it's frequent publishing of this. You have to have multiple distribution channels. When you post a blog, you can't just share it once on Facebook. Develop your funnels. You're going to have to have funnels because people don't transition. Remember, you have to transition them from your content to buying your product. So it's not going to happen. Someone's not going to just read your blog post and go, okay, this blog post is great. I'm going to go buy it. No, you have to show them. You have to send them out a funnel. And then finally, you have to use um, this acronym I call ADP, and that's Adapt, Develop, and Progress. So many companies, even tremendous brands that have unlimited capital, do not do this. So I want to teach you how to do this and do it right. Okay, so the first thing is identifying your target audience. Who are you targeting and why? That's a big question. You know, who, uh, you, okay, you have a web hosting company, you want to target people that need web hosting. All right, well, that's also everyone else. Who are you targeting <laughs> specifically? In Name Hero, ours is resellers. We are specifically looking for those that are wanting to start their own web hosting business, and we're going to provide them the picks and the shovels, the tools to do it. So that's, that's who and why. And that's who we're targeting. We're targeting mainly resellers. It doesn't mean we don't offer traditional web hosting. We do. It doesn't mean we don't offer VPS. It's because we do. But our main target audience right now at Name Hero is resellers. We're looking for those guys and gals that want to either already have a business um, selling web hosting or looking at getting into it. So we have a lot of web developers, WordPress developers, a lot of ad agencies um, that are wanting to offer this service to their customers as an add-on or maybe even a primary service. So that's what you have to figure out with your business. And it's all about the niche. You know, you cannot just say, I want to target everyone that needs web hosting because it's too broad. You cannot produce content just to everyone. You have to produce a unique group. So think about this. What issues or problems does your audience experience daily? So, for example, with reseller web hosts, they experience problems about how to get customers. So why not do a webinar on inbound content marketing? See what I'm doing here? How can you be the solution? Again, I'm going to produce this webinar on inbound content marketing. Um, what does your audience say about your brand? You know, do you already have an audience? You know, are they talking about your brand? What do they say about it? Is it good or is it bad? Do you have good feedback against your brand or is it bad? Um, you know, what are they saying? You know, listening, reading and reviews about your company. Um, next is publishing the useful content. Um, once you've properly identified your audience, you want to tailor your content around them. Okay, so you want to always be solving their problems daily. So you can go to namehero.com slash startup or namehero.com slash blog, either one. And you can see how we're targeting resellers. We are identifying their problems every day, and our blog revolves around content that helps them solve them. Okay, whether that's setting up WHMCS, whether that's getting a domain reseller account, whether that's being smarter with their business or promoting their business, that's the problems we're helping solve. Now, one problem I see that a lot of companies make is they want to use their company blog as our co corporate culture. They post about their holiday party or their office culture or look at our new ping pong table we just got or look at our vending machines. People don't care about that. Your customers do not care about your holiday Christmas party. Of course, corporate culture is nice, you know, to show you you employ people and that, you know, you give back to the community. That's that's good things, okay? And that's good PR. But your audience, it's going to be buying hosting. They don't so much care so much about your, your office culture and your holiday party. I mean, some of it's important. I mean, if once in a while I'll post here and there. But if all your posts in your blog are just talking about your corporate culture, it's boring and it won't sell. You know, people aren't going to, it's not going to be useful. And also, you don't want to focus on selling. You want to focus on helping. If your blog's all a sales pitch, then it's useless because people get tired of being sold. People get tired of pitching all the time. If you wanna get pitched, turn on Home Shopping Network, turn on QVC, they pitch all day long on there. Okay, so let's talk about these distribution channels. Once you have your audience, once you have your content, how do you want to distribute it? Well, first and foremost, I always say for any inbound content marketing strategy, um, it's having a blog. So at Name Hero, that's our, that's our centerpiece of Name Hero is the blog because the blog gets the information out. 
Um, and it's hosted on Name Hero. People like social media, well, okay, cool. Facebook could kill my Facebook page tomorrow. Well, that would stink. So my blog, I know I own the blog. I know it's on my server and it's never going away, ever. It's going to be in search engines till the end of time or until my time, which I hope after that my wife or my son will continue taking on. So I hope that my blog will be here forever. Next, you have email lists. Um, that's important on your blog is to have newsletters and guides that people can sign up for. And so you can email them. It's a little bit more personable when you get an email from someone. Uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, of course. Of course, it's distribution channels. But that's not your only thing. That's why I like to use a blog as the core and then expand outwards from the blog. So you have a blog that's the core. On top of that core, you have this email list. And then outside, you have the social media channels that you can syndicate the content and you can, um, and you can also stimulate this discussion. Now you have discussion forums. They're not as popular as they used to be because of social media. You have social media groups now. Um, but there still is web hosting talk. Warrior Forum, low-end talk in the hosting industry. Um, and these are forums that you can distribute your content. Now, I don't mean go on there and spam because that's going to make a lot of people mad. But if you're helpful on those forums, people are going to say, well, do you have a blog? Um, well, sure. There you go. Uh, there's another platform called Quora, Q-U-O-R-A.com. It's a good place, too, to distribute content and to answer and help people. Now, of course, affiliate marketers, um, I say this with a little bit of caution because affiliates can kind of be a pain in the butt, but they are some of the best inbound content marketers. If you look at some of the top um, web hosting affiliates right now, it's um, a lot of affiliate marketers that um, are promoting how to start a blog, and then they throw in their affiliate link. Hey, here's how to start a blog, and most of them are working for Bluehost. Here's how you start a blog. Look at my super special duper offer from Bluehost. Um but their inbound content marketing is very nice. Um, Pat Flynn, someone I follow a lot, uh, Smart Passive Income. You can go to his blog and check it out. He's a huge affiliate for Bluehost, and he does all of this inbound marketing on his blog. That's how he gets his blog popular, um, and that's how he generates a lot of revenue. So affiliates are some of the best um, inbound content marketers. Okay, now remember, you want your visitors to become fans before customers. Okay, read that again. You want your visitors to become fans before customers. You want them to read your content and to enjoy it and to like what you're posting before their customers because you want to create that trust. If your audience, they feel like that you understand them and you're connecting with them, there's going to be your long time and repeat buyers. Okay, if they if your audience feels like, well, man, you know, Ryan really gets this reseller web hosting stuff and I really like reading his blog. Well, then they're going to buy a reseller package from Name Hero and work for us forever. You know, they're, as soon as they grow, they're going to buy another reseller package, maybe a VPS. Maybe they're going to buy all their domains with this. I mean, they're going to be lifelong repeat buyers. Um, so you want to leverage your distribution channels to create this relationship. Use your social media. Use your blog. It creates this relationship. The biggest thing I got to say here, though, is be yourself. Being corporate is not cool. Uh, you know, in the late 90s when the Internet started to really catch on and all these companies were getting IPOs and going public and coming out, um, corporations start these corporate blogs and all these fancy looking websites and it just it's not cool anymore now in 2017 with social media and reviews people like just to hear from good old hearted people now i'm ceo of name here i'm not sitting in a suit and i'm tatted up i'm, I'm just an everyday entrepreneur i'm not a corporate suit behind it it's not cool people want to deal with people like them they don't want to feel like the, the CEO of a company is way up here and someone they can't even interact with. And Name Hero, we, we kind of have this corporate culture to where, um, you know, I work with everyone. I, I work with everything throughout the company. All my team members, are, they're like me. We're entrepreneurs. We want to help. We want to work together. And, and this creates a, a, a good experience. So when you're, when you're blogging, when you're creating content, remember, corporate is not, um, isn't cool anymore. I don't know if it ever really was. Maybe so. Okay, so now let's talk about your funnel. Your funnel is a systematic process that's always optimized. You always have to optimize it constantly. Um, and it's what makes visitors become customers, okay? So people that are reading your blog posts, listening to your podcast, watching your videos, you have to take those people and put them through a funnel into a systematic process, carefully thought out, to become customers. It's not like they're just going to watch your video on YouTube, read your blog post, and become a customer. No, you have to funnel them on through based on their interest levels. Now, of course, you want to split test this, and I'm going to show you some examples. So if you don't understand what I mean by funnel, I'm going to show you a visual here in a second. Um, but you want, I want to split test. I want you to split test multiple funnels um, to get your audience from blog post to customer. It's that bridge in between. Now, don't confuse this. Don't confuse a funnel with a sales pitch. You're not going to be writing a blog post and then doing a sales pitch and then selling it. You're going to pitch, but not without the pitch. If that makes sense. 
Your goal is to help your audience. Okay, you're going to help, not pitch, not sell. Help, not sell. Um, so your your goal is to help them solve their daily problems, and you want to be hungry for your content. At Name Hero, it's my goal that when I produce content on the Name Hero blog, that when someone reads it, watches a video, um, watches a webinar, that they're hungry for my next piece of content. They enjoy it so much, it helps their business. They cannot wait until they get that notification in their feed reader or, or in their email or on their social media for my next post. You want them to be hungry. So you don't want them to dread your next correspondence. Um, so let me let me give you an example, and I don't care to step on some toes here. I subscribe to HostGator's blog. They've got a um, form on there you can subscribe and get HostGator updates. Well, at first, they do things really good there, actually. HostGator's got a great inbound marketing plan. But here's the thing. They have this email list that um, sends updates. Well, every single day or every time they post a blog, you get an email. Hey, new blog. Well... For me, I'm, I now dread that because it, it's just so monotonous. Snappy says this and Snappy says that. So every day, instead of being hungry for the content, it's now like, oh, man, here comes another HostGator blog post. You don't want people to feel like that, okay? You want to be spontaneous. You want people to love the content, but don't get monotonous. So don't overdo it, okay? Don't send someone an email every time you post it. I mean, I guess you can. I guess maybe that does work. But eventually, over a year or two, it gets kind of old. You know, every day you post a blog post, and every day you send an email to someone, I think people in your list start saying, okay, we get it. This dude posts every day. Okay, good. It's good content, but I don't want it in my email every day. So use that with careful. If your content's useful, your audience will share it with their friends, family, coworkers. They'll share it with everyone they know. Okay, if it's um, if it's cool, they're going to share it. If it's good, um, so remember that when you're producing a piece of content, put the extra um, effort into it to make it good. Funnels can be something as simple or as complex as you want them to be. Okay. Um, Here's some of the things that I use: white papers, quick start guides, ebooks, webinars. This is a webinar, so this is part of a funnel. Uh, tutorials, videos—they're all good entry points to your funnel. Okay, so for example, to watch this um, webinar, um, to even to to register for it, you're going to have to submit a name and an email address and get your link, right? Uh, so that begins the funnel. Then you watch the webinar. Then at the end of the webinar, then you have an opportunity to go do something else. So it's a funnel. It it brings people on through. Now. I often tell people, get creative with your funnel because there's no wrong way to funnel people in or out. I mean, there's no wrong way. As long as it's creative and you're helping and not selling, um, you can do anything with a funnel. And that's what I love about them. Okay, so here's an example using a white paper. So let's break this down. Um, first, you have your visitors that are coming. Maybe they're coming from your blog post or, or whatnot, or, or maybe they're coming from a forum post, and they're going to hit your squeeze page. So maybe this is a white paper, and a good example um, can be on, I had one out there on the difference between cloud and traditional hosting, a white paper. So someone say, okay, I want to know the difference between cloud and traditional hosting. So I'm going to download it. So to download it, we say, okay, well, I need your name and email. Okay, after they give the name and email, boom, they get the white paper. So this is how the funnel begins, is it begins the squeeze page, they get their email, and they get their white paper. Okay, so from that white paper, then I link out to a blog post throughout the content. So they see the white paper, they get the information they want, then they're going to be able to click and get a useful blog post. Oh man, now they're going to the blog. Well now, from the blog, there's also um, entry points to Name Hero, to buy hosting, to buy, um, to buy your product. So there's the opportunity to turn it in from a visitor that was interested in, in cloud hosting versus traditional hosting now to become a customer. Now, of course, there's also this follow-up email sequence. Once someone opts into your list, you can email them. Now, again, don't do it daily if you post a blog post. My personal opinion, don't do it. Um, but if you wanted to, you could. But I'm talking about more follow-up with them. In a week from then, or maybe a day and then a week later, follow up. Hey, did you enjoy my white paper? Or hey, here's some other pieces of content that I've produced that you might also be interested in. Um, that's a follow-up email sequence that works very well with um, funnels. Now, I put on here, um, superior customer service is a must. If your web hosting service or the product or service you're offering is no good, all this inbound content marketing is done in vain. Um, it's got to be good. You have to offer a good customer service experience because that's what works with inbound content marketing so well. Um, if you offer a good product, good customer service, and your inbound content marketing correctly, there's really the sky's the limit the way you go. So I always say that um, when I'm talking about these strategies. Is you, you have to um, practice what you preach. If, you're, if you've got useful content on your blog and you're helping them out, you better be offering a good product and good customer service. I put social media in here with um, arrows pointing everywhere because really Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, it 
it plays, um, it can play a part in any, any step of this. Okay. So maybe that's just sharing it, your squeeze page. Uh, maybe that's just sharing in the white paper, whichever way social media always plays a, a role in inside of funnels. Here's an example with a video. So maybe in this example, maybe people run YouTube and they're searching for, um, I have one misuse in a real, real, real world example for Name Hero. I have a video on YouTube called How to Make Money with AliExpress. And it talks about how to create a website with WordPress, how to download this plugin and create an affiliate site for Ali, uh, AliExpress owned by Alibaba, and um, how to make money, okay? So when people are searching YouTube how to make money, that video comes up. That video specifically has like over 250,000 views on it. So for this example, my funnel, the funnel begins on YouTube. So people watch this, this YouTube video and then they head over to the Name Hero blog where I give more details about it and then they can get the white paper as well. But then they can also head over to Name Hero and buy their hosting. So the, so what started as a YouTube visitor to watch my video turns into a blog reader, which gets a white paper, which also turns into a customer at Name Hero. So once again, I've got the same superior customer service as a must and social media plays um, a point, an aspect in every part of it. A podcast. This is something else I do at Name Hero. Um, maybe you podcast weekly on on iTunes. Um, I do. Um, so maybe your so your visitors are on iTunes and they're searching for podcasts or, or listening. Um, well, if they like your podcast and they're a fan, well then they're going to read your blog. And of course, you're going to have white papers on your blog or downloads, which again can turn them to your website. And they can you can skip this process. Not necessarily do you have to be funneling people through your blog to a white paper. They can just maybe go to your blog to your site because you've built the trust already through this podcast. Um, but it's just, again, it's another example of inbound content marketing and leveraging your content to create this trust to build your customer bases. Okay, um, so it's all this that works together. Okay, a webinar. This is what we're doing right now. Um, is we're doing a webinar on inbound content marketing. So people, just like you, are watching this webinar right now. Um, but to, so at the end of my webinar, I could maybe send you to a landing page. And this one, you know, I don't know if I'm going to or not. But people, you, I'm giving a presentation that's helpful and useful. Okay, I'm teaching inbound content marketing. So those that are reseller web hosts or want to be reseller web hosts are watching this. It's a helpful webinar. And then maybe those that aren't customers at Name Hero, I'm doing this primarily for customers at Name Hero, by the way, but maybe people that aren't, um, you know, maybe they're going to buy web hosting now from Name Hero, reseller hosting, because they watch this video and they, you know, they, they like what I say and they like my approach and they want to work with us because we have this type of training. Um, so this is kind of the flow that maybe you want to do as well for your audience. Okay, so um, a visitor can enter a funnel on multiple channels. So we, we highlighted that. Maybe it's YouTube. Maybe it's your blog. Maybe it's Facebook. It can be n n numerous things. Um, I put trade shows on here because maybe you're at a trade show and maybe you hand them a, I've got one right here, a business card with a QR code on it. Um, so maybe at a trade show, someone scans the QR code on your um, business card and the funnel begins there. So maybe, you know, I give, um, I thought of this and I haven't done this. Maybe I could give a domain coupon code out on a QR code. So someone scans it and then they get a coupon code. Okay, so that you, you can get creative as you want. You have to have patience, though, because not every funnel works, and I'll talk about that, but some people need to be heavily impressed to gain your trust. So just one webinar doesn't cut it. I mean, if, you know, if this is the only thing I ever did, it, it's probably not going to be a good inbound content marketing strategy, right? I have to have a blog and white papers and, and videos. So you have to have a lot of things, especially in the web hosting industry. A few bad apples have given um, some people a bad perception of web hosts because of negative experiences, poor customer service, aggressive and deceptive marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we all know, and we all know those companies that are out there. So you have to have patience, especially when selling web hosting, that um, it's going to take a little bit to gain people's trust. I understand that at Name Hero, I still get cursed out on a daily basis. There's not a day that goes by at Name Hero that a potential customer doesn't come in that has a bad taste in their mouths from a bad experience they had in another web host and they want to curse or yell or get ugly with me because they just assume that we're going to be the same way. No, you know, it's 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 just that way. So you have to gain people's trust. And I understand that. So for those of you that are a little frustrated web hosts, promise, stick with me. Um, I promise to restore your faith the best that I possibly can. Some people I can't win over because I've tried and just doesn't work. But a lot of people can. Okay, this is a big this is my acronym that I 
teach all entrepreneurs, um, and I'm going to teach it to you. It's adapt, develop, and progress. So just remember ADP, almost like the security company, but ADP, adapt, develop, and progress. The internet's always changing, so you can never stop learning, especially in web hosting. There are so many web hosts out there still that I go to their site, and it looks like 1998. Look like 1995 called, and, their, and it wants their website back. Those companies got comfortable once they built their their recurring revenue base that what they needed to to be a big company um and they decided well you know this works and we're never going to change it this website layout works you can't do that you can't do that on the internet it's changing every day so you can't stop learning um people that buy hosting are going to have different needs tomorrow um someone that needs a website today is not going to have the same needs tomorrow so you have to adapt your business and change and develop around it okay you can't you you progress with your customers and always strive to offer a better product and a better experience. Back in 1999, 98, you know, it was worldwide March scripts. If you remember that, then kudos to you. It was old school CGI and Perl. Nowadays in 2017, it's WordPress, it's Drupal, it's Dramula. It's all these different platforms, okay? So we've had a, since I got started in 1998, things have drastically, dramatically changed in the last 20 years about how things are done now. So you always have to progress along. So that's a big part of inbound content marketing is you have to adapt to what changed, you have to develop around it, and you have to progress. People that say that they can't sell web hosting in 2017 are kidding themselves. You just can't sell web hosting the same way you did in 1998. Not even in 2008. It's changing. It's always changing. Web hosting is always going to be needed. I promise. I promise. People will say, well, you have all these SAS uh, software as a service platforms coming out. You have Amazon. You have all this. I get that. But people, there's always going to be a need for web hosting. And I've read and I've wrote some um, posts on my blog. You can check it out uh, where I see web hosting in five years from now. And, um, you know, I look at web hosting like a freedom of speech. You know, people that want to, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You can create a website in your bedroom, in your office, in your car, gosh, on your phone nowadays. And you can say what you need to say. So as long as that, as long as that stays true, there's always going to be a need for web hosting. Um as I say, it's boring and a chore to set up, so you have to make it interesting, okay? Um, you, have to, you have to get people's interest into your, into your web hosting. People don't just want to do it. You have to make it more intriguing. The easier you make it, the more helpful, the faster you'll gain leverage. So at Name Hero, our approach on this for reseller hosting, reseller hosting is boring. We show you how to make money with it because money's not boring, right? Quitting your day job, if you hate your day job, if you hate going to a, an office at 9 a.m. and not getting home till 5 p.m., it's intriguing and exciting to think that you can, you can stop that by creating your own business and by doing it the right way. Okay, so moving forward, um, effective inbound marketing strategies, they're evolved over time. This isn't something that you're going to do tonight and tomorrow is going to be booming, okay? It takes time. Useful content must continually be produced. I see a lot of great inbound marketers out there, but they get tired or burned out and then it stops. You have to keep producing. And I think the hardest part about inbound marketing is the first six months. Because the first six months, you're not overwhelmed with customers. You just got to produce content, right? But if you don't see those customers coming, you get demotivated, depressed. I get it. But once it seems like after that six month period, if you stick with it consistently, and I'm talking about daily blogging or daily content producing after six months, then you really start to see a shift and you start to see customers and then you get motivation. Okay. Um, so you have to look at it. At least, if you're going to do inbound content marketing, don't even come back and ask me about your results until you've done it consistently for six months. And then we'll talk. There's always rooms for optimization. So um, when you get started, there's always rooms to optimize and to become a little bit better. Um, so don't just think it's one video, one funnel, um, one blog post. There's always room for optimizations. Um, retargeting, it's an excellent outbound marketing um, method to help reach additional results. So those of you that you know, once you really do master inbound marketing, outbound marketing can be achieved with retargeting. So if you're not really want the cost of outbound marketing, you can use retargeting. And that's something I'll cover later on. So if you like, um, if you like what you're hearing, make sure you follow my blog. So I'll talk more about that. I don't have a lot of time on this webinar to go into detail about that. Now, top affiliate marketers, they've already figured this out. And they use these methods to promote the highest paying offers out there. That's why a lot of um, affiliate marketers promote the EIG brands because they can pay the highest, okay? Um, so they leverage your influence and push people through their funnels. So check out some of the top affiliate marketers. Like I said, Pat Flynn, the smart passive income. I have so much respect for Pat. Check out his site and look how he does it. 
Now he again he promote he doesn't even promote name here. He promotes Blue Hus. Cool. I don't care about that. But you look at his methods. Look at his inbound content. Look how he he gains trust between his readers. Get on his email list and don't copy him. But look how he gains his trust with his readership and how he brings him into hosting. It's a great idea. Um, it's a great method. Um, how he leverages his influence to push people through his funnel. So not only hosting is the only thing he promotes. He promotes tons of different stuff. A convert kit email. Um, um, services and everything he promotes. So check out his um, because he's a good example. One positive testimonial is equal to hundreds of ad impressions. Okay. So if someone likes your content and they give you a positive testimonial, or even if they just like your service, that's an equal to a lot of ad impressions. Okay. So that's, um, that really will take you to that next level is, is, is just one positive testimonial. So, so leverage those to your, um, to your advantage. Okay. Um, if someone gives you a positive testimonial, you know, that is worth a lot. So that's going to conclude this presentation on inbound content marketing, kind of an introductory, um, how to get in and begin dominating your competition. Um, if nothing else, I hope this webinar presentation um, opens your eyes up a little bit more um, to marketing your web hosting business. Don't just, so you're not just thinking Google AdWords, Facebook, and buying media, okay? I want you to think outside the box. I want you to think content production. I want you to think helping instead of selling, gaining trust, gaining a readership, and then working on selling your hosting. Uh, first six months, you're not going to have a lot of customers in your first six months of business. Just hammer out content, be helpful, be useful, and then you'll develop your strategy and really get going on it. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening to what I have to say. Uh, if you like this, please share it. Um, please subscribe to my blog at namehero.com slash startup or namehero.com slash blog. Check us out over at Name Hero. We have a lot of exciting things going on. We're about to start our um, seminars across the United States where I'm going to be presenting some information to help resellers. So um, make sure you get on one of those lists so you can attend in a city coming near you. So thanks a bunch for joining us, everyone. Once again, I'm Ryan Gray, the founder and CEO of namehero.com.